Morning everybody, I hope you are fantastic, I hope you are well. An enormous wave to you all and welcome to, yes, Coffee with Tara, the Wednesday edition. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Well, we're all still alive, aren't we? Look, it's magical that we're sharing this time. Oh, Rachel, good morning. Jose, good morning. Heather, good morning. It is fantastic to see you. And should we do this too? Cheers, cheers, cheers to you all. I hope you're having a fantastic time. And look, we're here again. We're all still breathing. We've got the four pinata of the apocalypse, obviously, behind me. Peter Capaldi is as alive as he's always been, pointing at us. He's pointing at you, so I hope you're doing fantastically well. And look, hello. I'll keep saying hello to people. That's fantastic. Danny, hello. Maeve, hello. Rebecca, hello. And who have we got in? Oh, Bogdana. Oh, what a beautiful name. It is lovely to see you and good morning to you. So look, team. We've got a lot happening today, and to borrow a phrase, if you will, from Antonio Gramsci, it's a real interregnum moment for the world. It really is. And you've got a sense, have you got this feeling too, there's a real sense that one bit of the world is sort of ending, and maybe something new is occurring on the other side, but we're sort of magically in the middle at the moment, sort of liminal sort of in between and those in between moments are always weirdly uncomfortable aren't they it's sort of a bit weird a bit uncomfortable and that's why i think gramsci referred to it as the interregnum one period is ending and another one is about to be born how exciting is this so look in interregna oh aren't we posh when it goes plural in interregna weird stuff does happen and it feels very unstable and so today I really wanted to move into the weird stuff I wanted to talk through the strange things that are happening on planet earth at the moment let alone in our universities and in the office and I've got a lot of friends at, at Flinders that have, have joined into this party in the office a lot of incredibly strange things are occurring now, I'll give you examples of this. So students are, are really, really frightened and concerned. You guys out there, you are frightened and concerned. And I sort of get that. But I had, for example, a student uh, that had contacted me by phone. We've got a video phone at Flinders, so that's quite exciting. That video called me from the lab saying, oh, look, Tara, are the labs going to close? You know, what's going to happen? What's going to occur? You know, are the labs going to close? What am I going to do? And my advice to her was, where are you now? And she said, I'm in the lab. And it's like, well, you're in the lab. How about you do work today in the lab and then see what happens tomorrow and next week and next month. So all of this is really about value and validating the day, valuing your day. So in some ways, it's sort of a weird 1960s art experiment, isn't it? It's like, put the future away, the past is gone and just live in the present. But there's something quite important in terms of research in living in that present. So what can I do today? So it's not wasting the time in the lab or the library or your office or with your mates or with your collaborators, not wasting today, because in some ways, today is all we have. Now I'm, I'm making light of this situation, but really there's a serious point here, isn't there? It's like, it's enjoying today. And good morning, Daniela. So we'll quickly go back to everybody. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, Maeve. Hello, Professor Quinton. I haven't seen you in so long. It's lovely to see you. Jenny, good morning. Bessie, how are you? Debbie, how are you? Oh, everybody's in the house. This is fantastic. Oh, Ben, you're in Scotland. Oh, I've been looking at the footage overnight about Scotland in lockdown. Living the dream, mate. Good on you, Ben. Fantastic. Great to see you. Hello, Emma. Fantastic. Kemi, hello. Doing well. Gillian. Hope you're going well in sunny Ontario. Fantastic. I'll keep going down. Dawn's in. Hello, Dawn. Juliana's in. <gasps> Transylvania has joined the call. We're now all class. Yinka, my queen, my friend, my companion at arms. You are the best in the universe. Thank you for being here. And Amy, we're going to talk about you in a second. Hello, Amy. Gigi's in the house. Jen. Lovely to see you, Jen, and I hope Lauren's somewhere in the party too. That's great. So who else is here? My 
Michael, my mate Michael, one of the greatest writers on planet Earth, Michael, wrote the greatest book on popular music, particularly focused on jo Johnny Cash, I've ever read. So Michael, it's wonderful to see you. You are a scholar and a gentleman. Great to see you, Ryan. Great to see you, Kylie. Great to see you, Libby. Big shout out to all the crew in ISO. We are with you, everybody. That's fantastic. So where we we're at, team, is we we're talking about this new normal. And look, it's clear in this new normal where we're hyper living and hyper sensate in the day that we've got to really suck the marrow out of every day because we don't know what's going to happen. You know, people can email me and say, Tara, what's going to happen? And yes, my grandmother may have been wicker, but I really don't know what's going to happen. I really don't know. And you can ask me and you can ask me 57 times, but I don't know what's happening tomorrow. I don't. I can read governmental policy. I can take great advice from experts, but we don't know. OK, so what we do know is we're all here together right now having a cup of coffee. And what we do know is together today, let's make the best of today. OK, so that's what we're going to do. It's all very 1960s experiment today. It feels a bit like, you know, when we're dealing with sort of the crisis around us, like a bunch of people, like it's 1969 and everyone sort of dropped a tab of acid, you know, stay away from the brown acid. And it's like everyone's freaking out. And it's like, well, you know, just stay away from the brown acid. Let's just focus on today and see how we are going. Good morning, Karen. I'm from Niagara. Oh, beautiful Niagara. Karen, which side are you? Which side are you? Let me know. Are you on the Ontario side or in the US? Great. And hello, gorgeous Kay from Southern Cross. Oh, it's lovely to see you. And Kay is submitting her thesis in one and a half weeks. Kay, that's tremendous. So what an amazing time to submit. You'll never forget this time. Hello, Maggie. Great to see you. Julie! Julie, love ya thinking of you you are precious you are spectacular it's lovely to have you on the call lauren's in ali going to be talking about you in a second gorgeous ali in a good way a link you gave us so team the theme the trope of our gig today is change and particularly changes and have you noticed by the way so those of you that went straight to the david bowie track good on your ch -ch changes that's great have you noticed that the world has basically imploded since David Bowie died. I always had a sense that David Bowie was sort of holding the planet together and like when he died, it all really did this. And so uh, I, I'm not really surprised we're in this mess, but so listening to some David Bowie might also be useful at this point. If I remember Labyrinth, oh, like on the weekend, I think I'm going to watch Labyrinth again. What a tremendous film that was. So what we're doing is we're talking about ch -ch changes today. We're going to look at research changes. We're going to look at work-based changes, so paid work and what's happening to the paid work environment at the moment, professional relationships and their changes, and also family and personal changes. So Libby, you mentioned that a little bit yesterday, so I want to bring that thought back in place for you. And yes, as per request, well, not really, I just want to do it. Uh, as per request, we've got our desk dancing interlude. So make sure that you're all limbered up and you're ready to go. And I know Libby that you're at your standing desk, so you've got to get all your bits moving and completely embarrass your children. So we look forward to hearing how that goes, Lib. So I've also got today some really intense questions for all of you that I'd love to get your answers to. Again, as I did yesterday, I'm going to post them early in each of the sections that we're going to talk about. And do write your comments down because not only am I trying to read them in real time, but I go back over them. I know all of you do as well to get the advice from some of the most brilliant people on the planet that happen to be here and sharing this time if not this space. Yeah, and Tricia, yeah, I know, I'm so there with Bowie as well. There's so something happened, just the whole fabric of the universe sort of imploded, I agree, after, after David Bowie left us. So let's go for this. And what I particularly want to talk about, team, is the confusion that's occurring at the moment between what I sort of realised last night is between short-termism 
and long-termism. And I think there's almost like the optimists are doing the short-termism and the pessimists are doing the long-termism. And how do we balance these two? It's like the good angel and the bad angel on our shoulder. So we're going to talk about change. And we're going to look change in the eye and we're going to have a think about how we can have a good day today and wake up tomorrow and have another good day tomorrow. So let's start with research changes. So I'm just going to write this down in real time as I did yesterday, team. So we're now moving into our section on research changes. Okay. And we've discussed a lot this week about methodology and methodological changes. And well, we had some fantastic conversations overnight about unobtrusive research methods. I know Maeve has been doing a lot of work with that overnight. Good on you, Maeve. And it is an area of interest to you. For those of you that today, we talked about unobtrusive research methods. That's non-reactive methods. So looking at the data sets that you have now, they may be found data sets online, offline, and what you do with the data sets that you have in place now. So you're not looking for anything new, you're working with what you have. And that's great. And I think the big the big issue and i've been trying to work out why students are so incredibly stressed and worried pretty early on in this saga because this may go on for a month or two months or three months and in fact you know the more zombie apocalypse argument would be the world will never be the same again but we don't know so i've tried to work out why particularly some students are so worried, freaked out, concerned and responding so quickly when actually objectively not much has changed in their vista today right now. And so for our students I think and what I've had to realise as a supervisor, a little alone as Dean, is for our students and we all forget this, this is your first research project, your first really big research project. You might have done a capstone in your undergraduate degree or a master's in some systems or an honours in some systems, but this is your first big research project. And we need to remember that, and i tell you why. I always have a maxim that you don't know what you don't know. And I forget that so often because, you know, I know what I know, you don't know what you don't know, and then you end up all sort of twisted up. So you've got to sort of move out of that argument. But I think that's why I've worked out some students are handling this so badly because they are inexperienced. And so if you are one of these students and the whole idea of having to change your research design or change your research questions or deal with some methodological complexity, and you know, maybe having to transform how you enact data collection, that's quite frightening or troubling or confronting. And for the wonderful students we have at Flinders, I was in a gig yesterday with nursing and health sciences. So a lot of the allied health environments are in this particular college. And it was fascinating watching the extraordinary students, the wonderful students talk through, well, this is my project and these are my methods and this is what's going wrong with those methods. And then sort of the sentence stopped and there was no sense of, right, well, that's that was one way of doing that. Have you thought about the other methodologies that might be available to enact the same research design and the same learning outcomes, the same outcomes for what you're trying to achieve? And that was interesting. And you could see the students actually enliven when that realisation that there are different ways to skin a cat there are different ways to enact your project. And so just because one way of enacting data collection is not going to operate in this current environment doesn't mean that alternatives aren't available. They really, really are. And you know what? Some of those alternatives might end up being not only better, but truly brilliant and providing a whole other research agenda and article and publication on alternative research methodologies. Cool. Research changes, yes. So I'm just going to follow up, make sure everyone's cool. What have you got? Yes, Dawn, that's a great tip. Well done. And Will, my mate Will's in. Will, adore you, absolutely adore you. And I'll get your advice, Will, on creative led projects too, and alternative ways of doing those, because there's incredible diversity that's available at space as well. 
um, lovely. I, and Gigi's entered. Gigi, are you having a nice, a nice Chardonnay with us this afternoon? I hope we are. But can I say Gigi's right on that, that the chaos and the change is going to transform us and is going to transform our research. So in many ways, we should go with it like a wave. Don't, don't fight it. Actually move with it. Take it in the different way we're going. And SJ, Sarah Jane's point there about Indigenous modalities and Indigenous ontologies, incredibly important there. And again, I agree. SJ, thank you for doing that. And Oscar, hello. Yes. Oh, and I just will answer Oscar's point. Hi, Oscar. Um, Oscar Garcia Miranda, what a fantastic name. What about data collection in a field uh, biologist projects right now? Let's have a think. So Oscar, what are, we, what are we doing there? So if this was your plan and your strategies, we've talked about with a lot of our science-based colleagues, and we have a special guest in tomorrow to talk particularly about lab-based environments. But as I have often advised, if you are halfway through on a lab-based or clinical environment, and remember ethics is important in this conversation too that we might come back to in a sec, but think about iterations. So this version of your data collection took place. And maybe you had a version whereby that was the way you were going to collect three data points or more. Or maybe now it is an iterative research project where different methodologies are deployed and you gain data in different ways, fully acknowledging that it may not be a representative data set, it's an illustrative data set, but then interesting and different discussions and arguments can emerge. Because all of this team is about doing the best with what we've got. And I think there is this notion that you know research is perfect. And for the experienced researchers out there, uh, we know research is never, ever perfect. I'm just gonna grab a question for you all. We know that research is never, ever perfect. And every big research project that I have ever done I've ever done started with all oh, this is going to be great and this is going to happen and it's going to be logical and rational and all my social subjects that I'm going to deploy are going to behave well and they're going to behave exactly like I think they're going to behave and the great thing you realize is that people are people let alone different environments particularly I mean sharks are sharks uh, for our, all our sharkies out there team the, the we live in an incredibly unpredictable environment and you know what that's the juice the diversity the complexity the weirdness that's what makes research magnificent that's what makes research interesting but of course you as the researcher you don't have control over that and maybe that's sort of the moment that we all want control and it's sort of a modernist agenda and it's rational and it's you know, longitudinal and it's predictable and you know you can have transparent and rigorous and accountable research that maybe isn't empiricist it's empirical and empirical is incredibly important but it's a different theory of the empirical and developing that and thinking through what that means how meaningful is that so the question I ask of all of you, whether you've done an honours project or a capstone in North America or all the incredibly experienced researchers that we've got on this call, and of course, Will, you're a legend, Lauren, hi, Jen, hi, this is a great example for you guys. How have you managed a big change in your research design or your research plan? So if you could give me examples that you've done where something's happened and you've had to transform it. Yes. Oh, I'm getting a question from Danielle. Hello, gorgeous Karen. Karen's in the house, darling. You can, you're welcome to stay gorgeous if you choose. Sit and get comfortable. Move, move our gorgeous four horsemen as you choose. So I was handling gorgeous Pip. Hello, Pip. You need to revisit ethical approval. That's absolutely true. And that was a point I made yesterday. The modification of ethics is quite important. And as I explained to our, our gorgeous crew in nursing and health sciences yesterday, how I would handle the mod, what we call the ethics modification or the mod, is 
Here are your participants or your culture or your environment. Here is your participants. Now, how will the change impact on them? If your methodologies are moving online, in many ways, there's a whole series of new accountabilities and new opportunities for them to step away that didn't exist in the face-to-face. -face. So in many ways, in the online methodologies, your participants have more choices. So there's firstly that bit of the ethics. The second modification is the impact on you, because all ethics is about really is about health, wellness, rigor, transparency and accountability for everybody. So everybody is safe. So for you, through this transformation of your methodologies, particularly if it is going to an online environment, is it safe for you? And of course, it's probably increasingly safe. Then the final combination to think about in terms of the ethics modification is how that impacts on the rigor of your data set. So think about strongly, team, about how that works. So what sort of data set are you predicting? What sort of data set do you think may or may not occur? What are the weaknesses? What are the strengths? And how will it enable you to complete your project? So that's incredibly important. So does that help a bit? But ethics is everything, but a modification, as, as long as it's rigorous and careful and explaining in terms of participants, you and outcomes, then that's quite a straightforward modification. And as I said, if a lot of your materials are moving from a face-to-face -face and analog to a digital, a lot of the ethical matters are easier to address because the person can walk away at any point. So it's much more rigorous in terms of that outcome. Um, can't focus. So Chris, hi Chris. So Chris, we're going to talk about that in a second. That Chris, you're just sort of you're, you're mucking about with unimportant stuff and you just can't focus. That's absolutely cool. There are strategies for that in terms of cleaning up your environment at least for 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour a day, and you'll start to develop your information literacy and get yourself nice and rigorous. Yes, it's the focus that's worrying you all. Oh, I love that. And if you can read Amy's point on methods, that's terrific, Amy. Methods change as you clarify your problem and identify new problems. I mean, Amy found that in her thesis. So take the coronavirus away, team. Take all of that away. Methods do change. Whatever your discipline, methods do change iteratively as you see what has worked and what has not. So I think it's very important that we don't just go, oh, look, well, the coronavirus has done this. Have a look at the nature of your research. Have a look at what is occurring and what would occur without the virus as much as with the virus and remain focused on rigour, transparency and accountability. That's, that's the whole point of academic research, rigour, Make sure that it's rigorous, that it's accountable, and it's transparent. So you can explain to others that this can occur. Now, repeatability is incredibly important in some paradigms and just not possible in others. So for our crew in the creative arts, repeatability is not part of your vibe. And I absolutely get that, and neither should it be. In a lot of areas of the applied social sciences and on, absolutely, repeatability is crucial. Yes, Karen. Karen's in the house, she's moving in and about. So let's have a look, Lib. I'm, I'm just reading your comment now, Lib. To manage a major change in my research, I had to start again and do a different project. You did, Lib. I had to start again and do a different project. I took an intermission, but spent time planning the new project. So Libby, for example, again, perfect, had nothing to do with the coronavirus, Lib, had this notion about what her research would look like. And you know what? didn't happen that way. So she had to take a breath, start again with the research questions, go through the methodology and epistemology, and Lib, how long have you got? I mean, you're nearly finished, really. I'm not in pressure on you in ISO, but Lib, you're nearly finished. So it's been a really tremendous revisioning of your project. So that's fantastic. Jamie just said hi, Karen. Hi. Uh, Julie, hello. That makes research exciting as we have no idea what will transpire. Oh, I love that. I thought you would, Julie and Karen are classy, you see. The classy people are communicating now. Yeah, and that's, a, you don't know what's happening. Guys, if, if the old Dean is of useful to you, I'm 51 years of age, just producing my 19th book with gorgeous Tiffany and Nat, if they're on the call. And, and guys, the one thing I've learned from all this time is how you think it's gonna happen, it never does. It never does. 
never never does so if you can find a way and people use the word resilient i think that's probably wrong if you can find a way to enjoy it you know enjoy the weirdness enjoy the instability it, it's your power. it's your worst nightmare karen though isn't it really because you're a planner um, empirical yes um, if you let everybody know this is what I'm examining and this is how I'm looking at it it invites them to look at it with you Matt you're a genius everyone can look at Matt Levy you're a, you're a legend Matt thank you for being here because that's the point that's what I mean about transparency if you're dealing with examiners team take the examiners on the journey with you the examiners have not been living in splendid isolation during this period they know the coronavirus has happened right i know as your dean the examiners know so you know what you say you know what the methods that i started with i did this and then this happened in the world and then i decided on this and they'll just go yeah cool eh cool team that's brilliant that's what you're meant to do so See, classy. They'll like the adaptability, won't they? Yes, they will, Karen. Good morning, Karen. Thank you that you're here. Um, so that's the point. It's about about rigor. And remember, we're we're proving that you're intelligent. So you've gone, okay, well, the context has changed. Here's my project. What can I do to make this work? That's fantastic. Gigi, you're fantastic going through. Oh, the advice is magnificent. Oh, Tiff's in the house. Good morning, Tiff. Hi, Tiff. And of course, Tiff started with, I had a massive rupture. Yes, she did. And that's not personal, by the way. <laughs> that's a research matter. She had a massive rupture. And so adaptation became the most exciting chapter. And it did. It did. So something really pretty catastrophic happened in Tiffany's thesis. And that became an entire chapter. So the catastrophe happened. Let's write through the problem. Let's write the catastrophe. Yes, let's do that. And, if, and she got a double A, one like the best thesis on planet Earth ever, and the examiners loved it, and all of them commented about her adaptability. So that's going really well. Love it, Karen. So Julie and you, just BFF. That's just fantastic. Um, great. So they're beautiful in terms of how change has happened in the research team. And can I also say, and Tiffany's the great model for that, how those types of projects end and all of us are doing those projects right now i'm writing one up where it's all gone a bit bonkers and i'm having to do this change on the weekend guys so i get it recognize that the project nine times out of ten improves through the reflection that this cataclysmic change has created for you so please as a favor to me don't think that the project is over the carnival is not over it's not over put the problem into the work but the urgent point that i would really make to us all today and it is an urgent point is focus on today and karen you've been seeing in my inbox as well it's it's so sad it makes me sort of weep really with the sadness of what's occurring from students and the students that are going to make it team i don't want to be harsh on this or hard but sort of i i, I need to get you through the students that are going to make it are going to say, what can I do today? Mm -hmm. Today. Pick a job, don't you say that? Well, I always go, pick, uh, you can either do it, pick the low-hanging fruit. Isn't that classy? Pick the low-hanging fruit. So what's the easy job for me to do today? But also in this circumstance, to be frank, and Professor Quentin and I talk about this a great deal, the advantage of being married to a physicist is what we're talking about and what he is doing with his students today in all the meetings that he is having you know experimental physics lab-based physics is do the experiments do the experiments today the lab is open the lab is open for phd students today as we walk around the lake do the experiments don't sit in your office with the lab down the corridor going oh the lab might be closed soon the lab is open today. Run a set, run a sample, do it for me, do it today. What can you do today? Come to work tomorrow. What can you do tomorrow? And that makes whatever you can get, whatever data set you can get is a tremendous one. Carly, good morning, superstar. It is lovely to see you. Love to your little one. Fantastic. So the next issue, hello, gorgeous Ash. 
A Ashley, do you want to wave to everyone? That's our head of progressions, Ashley Merrill, everyone. You rock and she, she's got a spreadsheet with all your name on it, as you'll see in half an hour or so, my darling. No. Rock and roll. Thanks, darling. Um, so, Ashley, you're meeting everybody. This is fantastic. So, team, let's now talk about, and I just want to put the question down for everybody as well to cut and paste this to get you focused. I know we've got crew that are having a Chardonnay and about to go to bed and you're going to start again tomorrow. But the question I have for you, is what are you going to work hard on today? Today, Alyssa, I'm looking at you. What are you going to work hard on today? So don't second guess the future. We don't know. Uh, as my old mother always used to say, tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Work hard today. Okay, so there's that. That's the research stuff. Let's look at the work changes. Now, this is a pretty shocking professional time. You remember that great Simply Red track, Money's Too Tight to Mention? <laughs> oh yeah, it really is. And our students, whether we're talking about undergraduates, postgraduates, our friends, we're living in a really tough environment of casualized work. And look, a lot of our friends are on casual contracts. We talk a great deal about the precariat, the precariat nature of academic employment at the moment. And that's an international problem. So, so much of what is worrying us all, and I get this, is about money and is about a reliable income. So for those of us who are in somewhat more stable jobs, although what that means at the moment, I'm not certain, this is really challenging because our friends are suffering as well. And we don't actually know what the world, what Australia, what our universities are going to look like on the other side of this. We really don't know. And what I want to do, and Ali, hi Ali, you sent a wonderful uh, document around, hello Reese, lovely to see you mate after all this time. You're a rock star, you're an inspiration. Uh, and look, the wonderful Ali sent around a remarkable article, I think it was a couple of days ago, Ali, where it talked about that what the virus is actually doing, it's not creating any new problems, but it's revealing what is broken in our society. It's always been broken, but the virus is revealing that. And of course, whether we're talking about Australia or South Africa or Aotearoa New Zealand, the United Kingdom, lockdown London, I've been watching the footage, unbelievable, the tubes, unbelievable, uh, or in the United States or in Canada, you know, these problems have always structurally existed, but when this issue has emerged, my goodness me, we're seeing the trauma in our culture. So in other words, casual work and the problems of casual work have always existed, certainly for the last 15 years in our universities. And PhD students have been reliant on casualized work and casualized contracts since I did my PhD. I was in tutoring for, for my professor, for my supervisor at the time. Wasn't pleasant work, paid a bit of dough, paid the bills, thanks for playing. Yeah? But the challenge is now how we manage all of that. Libby, I agree. Isn't that a remarkable article? Remarkable article from Ali, exposing what is broken. Hello, Elizabeth. So in terms of work, we're really seeing the instability of Australian culture right now and seeing this around the world. And it, it made me weep and I've been sort of crying a lot the last couple of days, to be honest with you. And Karen, we didn't talk about it too much yesterday because you and I were both upset. But on Monday in Australia, one, I mean, I'm getting upset now, one million people lost their jobs. Friends of ours, friends of Karen, friends of mine, lost, lost their jobs, lost their jobs. So, in, in a time such as this, and you know, in Australia, you guys around the world may not have seen this footage, but we had these terrible block queues uh, into Centrelink, which is basically our sort of welfare employment agency in Australia. And of course, breaking all sort of social distancing protocols, Karen. Yep, and devastating. And, and, and like there were wonderful women going, you know, I've worked every day of my life for the last 15 years. I've never been a day out of work. I am today and sobbing in the queue, right? So these are terrible times, but I did want to particularly talk about the future of the academic workforce. So I'm just going to put in a question to ponder. Yeah, thank you, Julie, your daughter and all her housemates. Absolutely, this is, this is catastrophic. This is generational catastrophe, really, I get that. So team, what I particularly want to focus on right now is the academic job market. Now, some very odd things are happening in this academic job market at the moment. 
Now, there is a large number of universities where permanent and contract posts, that's tenurable and non-tenurable posts in North America, but both permanent and contract posts in the rest of the world are being advertised. Now, if they have been approved, they've been advertised. And from my chat with friends around the world, many who are on this call, those jobs are progressing. And what is occurring? So if jobs are appearing on LinkedIn, those processes are occurring. And online interviewing is taking place. And just to give you an example, I have a sort of proxy for that. I've written more academic references in the last week than I've written in the preceding 12 months where people have applied for work and they've been shortlisted and I've been asked from universities around the world to write a reference. Okay, so therefore, what does that sort of appointment look like at the moment? And what I would also say to you too is if jobs have been paused, the other strength of that is in a few months time, there's going to be <laughs> there's going to be a hell of a lot of jobs that are going to be advertised where they've had to pause the appointment process and they're returning. So the question therefore is, if the appointments are going to be in place, what are you going to do to prepare yourself to apply for those jobs? And therefore the argument is really, really, really use this time and work on your CV. Lauren, I love you forever. Get your advice on this one, mate, because you're doing the real time stuff in the States. You keep act acting as a mirror for me and offer commentary from the States to me. All right. So let's do this, Lauren. Shauna, be interesting to see how the job specs change. Look, Shauna, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about now. You and I are linked. You know, you and I were married in a previous life. You know that, Shauna. So what I would say to you is thanks for that, Karen. No, sorry. That was, was that a, was that an, like it's an infuriated? Cold. It's cold, is it? You're moving around a lot. You know me, I'm a reptile. Yes. Oh, you're a reptile. You're... Okay, so it's all very social distancing, social distancing. So bottom line is, Shauna, work on that CV. So what I would say to you is slam as much of the thesis out as you can. Get the publications out the best you can. Now, can I say the other interesting thing that I've been monitoring in the last week and a half is publishing has not been disrupted. Okay, so this is important. I'm talking journals and book publishing. I've got two articles that are being published in the next four weeks. I've contacted the editors, they're probably on the call, and that's progressing as normal. So the editors haven't changed, the journals haven't changed, two are under review. I checked if they needed any further information. They're progressing through review. And I've got a book moving through editing with Natalie and the wonderful Tiff. So there's no delays in publishing at all. So the challenge is right now, if the work is running out and your money is running out, and I get that, and you're reliant on short-term teaching and learning, don't necessarily think that's going to go away, but it will change. So what I would say is we have hundreds of people on this call team. Erin, how are you, mate? Love it. Lovely to have a lot of Ontarians on the call today. That's tremendous. So what I would say, if you've heard anything about work available anywhere in the world, please post it right here on these comments, team, because if you can't use it, somebody else will. So this is about community development, okay? We're going to have to look after each other. If we rely on one person, we're going to die. We're not going to make it. So if you need work or you're available or you know that work is available in your institution please post it there and let's get people in work let's keep the money moving during this interregnum let's keep the dough going but importantly we need to recognize that new skills are also going to be needed in these interviews and there's going to be some really urgent jobs that are going to need to be filled in the next few months so what, what's going to happen here? And this is where the gorgeous Amy gave me the whole idea, actually, for the session that we're doing today. Amy, you are wonderful. Can I say Dr. Amy Butler, uh, an outstanding woman, an outstanding scholar who's producing a lot of articles, and I recommend her research to you. But Amy gave me a great message, team. How do teaching staff document this period of time for their CV. They may be involved in, here we go, you're doing it right now today, I know you are. Course redevelopment, restructure, training others how to engage in new tools, training themselves 
to use new tools. In particular, any thoughts about how casual teaching staff can document this time? How brilliant is this? I also think this question is relevant to anyone who is having to reinvent and upskill their career in some way. Like the whole of the OTR? Well, like, like the whole of the world. Yeah, that's true magnificent in so many ways so let me just offer you some quick stuff let's talk about your cv now as i've always said to my crew your cv is a living open breathing document okay it must be have it open on your computer all the time so for early career researchers for phd as hell for all of us we have to work through and celebrate everything that we're doing at the moment and keep that cv up to date so for example every friday afternoon i open up my cv and i try and add a line to that cv about something that i've done that week some weeks it's really really easy there's a new article so i go oh yeah boom that's fantastic some weeks ago not much really happened this week so then on saturday morning i do a linkedin professional development session and add a line to the cv that way but Amy, as you know, Amy, I have a very, very big, big CV because size matters a lot to me, Karen, as you know. Mm -hmm. And my CV is 58 pages in length and I will just keep going. And I do pretty well with that CV. You know, people go, oh, look, you know, a resume is two pages. Nonsense. This is an academic CV. Sort yourself out. If you've written like 19 books, then like 10, come on, that's not going to fit on a two-page resume. So sort yourself out. If you've done more stuff, your CV is longer. So one of the headings I have on my CV is professional development. So if you, this week, you've had to do Zoom training, collaborate training, for example, if you're using Moodle, put that in your PD session, thanks. Now, I don't have a skill session, so I don't have a section of my CV that says skills. After Amy's message, I think I'm going to add skills <laughs> to my CV. And that's where you talk about software and hardware and interface management. And in the teaching session section of your CV, and I haven't done this again, I've just done this after Amy's commentary, is break that down into, I think, course development, modes of delivery, and curricular revision. So this is the time where you can really, really add lines to your CV. You really, really can. And these are radically important skills team this is radically important we are all doing tasks every hour this week that we didn't even know existed we didn't even know this was a thing okay it's a thing and if you're going to get a job in three months time with one of these wonderful universities they now know it's a thing and if you can do it then you need to tell them about that so these new times provide incredible opportunities so start to log them and therefore the big question i'm going to ask you and amy you lead the way on this one what new skills have you been developing in the last little bit oh and gg thank you great idea about upskilling it certainly is oh jen what have you said we haven't desk danced jen i'm going to i'll finish this section and i'm straight there and oh we have a track for you jen Jen, I know, I know Jen's limbering up, so Jen's been do, sort of doing competitive yoga for the last three hours ready for this. I understand that, Jen. So think about what is useful for people and start to codify those skills. So what I've been doing, Tim, again, don't know if this is useful to you, but when I have been developing a new skill, so I've been looking at specific areas of Moodle that are useful or really odd things that Zoom is allowing us to do. I've always used Zoom, but in pretty fundamental, easy ways. And now Zoom is like, oh my goodness me, it's just phenomenal. So what I'm then doing is, right, well, I have that skill. I'm then doing a LinkedIn learning course uh, to codify that. So then I get a certificate, love a good certificate. Do you like a certificate, Karen? Always. Love a good certificate, a bit, of recognition. bit of recognition, and and then I get a certificate, and I put that on LinkedIn, that I got and then I put it on my CV. Okay, so team, that's how we do that. Now, as per request, Jen, as per request, are you ready for this? What are you? How are you going to do oh, this? I don't know today. What do you mean you don't know today? Okay, so the dancing interlude. Uh, the, Nat, we've got Nat. Nat, Nat, do you want to wave? Nat, 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 wave. You don't want to wave. You're scared. Well, she's coming. She's just taking her bag off. She's taking, now, do you want to just wave? Wave to everyone. This is the famous head of examinations, Natalie Hills. Oh, aren't you looking edgy off happy days? Oh, edgy. 
You're, you're down with the young people, Nat. Okay, well, we're about to desk dance, Nat. So do you want to get out or in? Okay, we're ready. Are you ready? Everyone limbering up. Jen, come on. We're going to do competitive desk dancing. Are you ready? Let's do it. You ready, Karen? Yep, yep, sure. Oh, thanks for that. Okay, ready? Here we go. You don't know the track? Oh, thanks for that, Nat. Oh, thanks for that. Thanks for the support. You're gutless, Karen. You talking to yourself? I could keep going forever, really. I could just do that forever. That's going to be playing in the office all day. Now, Jen, was that good? Did you enjoy that, Jen? Did you enjoy it? Hey, Nat. Yeah, you'll love Nat. I knew that. That's fantastic. Get your dance cues. Only one. Oh, Lauren. Thanks, Lauren. That one's for us, mate. Fantastic. So, team. That dance was terrific. Let's just have another coffee as we always do. So coffee after the coffee break. Oh, that's tremendous. So team, let's now. Oh, I love Ali. I love that song. That song, wherever it comes on, like a grocery shopping, although not at the moment, because like people will hit me. But like grocery shopping, wherever it comes on. I'm there, Ali. I'm there. I'm there. I'm in the moment. Okay, so let's talk professional relationships here, team. Because we're reaching the last sort of minutes so I just want to get get it close to us and try and work out what's happening at the moment so professional relationships are changing enormously because a lot of our colleagues are stressed and there is a lot of displacement that's going on I think too and that has a huge effect on students so if our colleagues if our friends if our peers are not managing stress very well and putting it on other people then you know, that has a huge impact. And I know Will is a very good mate of mine. I love Will Peterson, like life itself is a great mate of mine. Hi, Will, you know I you. And he manages things incredibly well and I find him very calming for me. And you know, I hope I'm relatively calming with Will. But so team, that's important. How are you managing the people in your life that are maybe not managing the stress as well as you and as I often say no one knows what the future holds so when an academic when a colleague when a member of the faculty is saying oh look the university is going to shut down and, and you know we might all be back together in 2025 he or she they don't know that they don't know that no one knows that we don't know that so anything that's a vibe that they've just like they're expressing their fear wish them well but we've got to find strategies to disconnect yourself from it i know that's hard in a lab-based environment it's tough if you're in a clinical environment really hard if you're in a, a social science office you've got five people squeezed into an office but you haven't because of social distancing so if you're in an office and like people go oh this is bad then, then you can't really get clear headspace. You just can't really get, it's a pool. Jim, we have to read that later, bro. What's happening in the pool? It's unbelievable. And look, Lauren, that's the thing. When we've got faculty stress, yeah, that's bad enough. You know, we, we need to self-actualize and self-manage that. When we're displacing it onto students or other people, then this problem becomes a lot worse. And I, I don't know about you guys and gals around the world, but we're addressing that a lot in the office. So somebody's invented a vibe that's not true, and then it's becoming the sort of whisper around the corridor, and then we, we're getting it reported like a fact. It's not a fact, it's a vibe. So what I'd say is give yourself permission to talk with other people who are cool, who are living in the present like you, and find a way, if you can, to socially and culturally distance yourself, okay? So if it involves you doing downward facing dogs repetitively, and I know that's Sarah Casey. Sarah Casey has been in a downward facing dog, I think, for about five weeks at this point, uh, burning aromatherapy oil, making like dolphin noises. <coughs> Uh, and look, that's fine. If that's the way that you're self-managing, then that's that's fantastic. Burning a lot of aromatherapy oil, that's great. Jamie Quinton has done more downward-facing dogs in the last week than I ever thought humanly possible. 
Uh, so T, if that's working for you, anything that's working for you, I would do that. Wonderful Tiffany sent me a document this morning that said there's an alcohol problem emerging at the moment. Obviously, there's an alcohol problem emerging sort of everywhere at the moment. I think that's quite important that, you know, all the memes are hysterical on this. It's like, you know, <laughs> people are like at home for like three weeks and like <laughs> there's a rush on the bottle shop. I mean, in Australia, there was sort of that rush on like a paper and stuff and then there was water and now it's single malt scotch so this if you're battling you're battling to find a single malt scotch anywhere in south australia so so team finding ways to manage perhaps involving downward facing dogs rather than single malt i think we are winning so hang on <coughs> now professional stuff let's get down to families okay so your families not much you can do about your family if you've got a a friend or a colleague where it going a bit then you can go and wish you well, see in a couple of weeks. Uh, but the trouble is if you're living with those people, if you like accidentally married one of them at some point, then wow, good luck, or they are your own children. So all sorts of stuff is happening with our families. Respect to the crew and ISO, incredibly important. Hello, right, it's lovely to see you, my darling. All sorts of stuff is happening with our families at the moment. People are working from home. As Gordis Libby said yesterday, you know, she always works at home, but now her husband and all her children are there as well. Uh, and so that's creating a whole series of traumas for her. And we've got other wonderful students that sent messages to us that are sort of they're living in like a single box of an environment and they're sort of there and trapped there, uh, let alone with a partner. So that's causing all sorts of problems. So a lot of us are going to be at home quite a lot. Hello, Amanda, it's lovely to see you, darling. So the question for all of us, and I mean, gorgeous Karen, this is an interesting question for you. What changes are you making to your household to create new types of stability so how are you because obviously you and dave are still coming to work we don't know for how long where are one the kids now well, one, one child home with a sniffle that she's being treated like the plague um understand maybe don't report that to health services no, and no, stuff no no as yeah. by school not not by us no no yeah. no uh, although her older sister is treating her much yes but how old are they they're, they're 15 and 13. 15 and 13 so living the dream it's great it's spending time like you mentioned yes um so we will probably just put in place that they have they all of their schooling here they can do online which is terrific terrific so even though anna's not at school today she's doing some bits and pieces online she has just called me to ask if she can make a bacon and egg sandwich so hopefully the house is still there when i get home um, very well disciplined children <laughs> yes right. um but we will probably try and get them outside as well so go for a walk we might even dust off their bikes that they haven't used for ages so try and get some routine see routine movement i think that's a really keep good one keep the routine in the movement we talked about scheduling in the last couple of days team i think that's dead crucial and get out of the house a bit if you can i mean i was i was walking with professor quinton at, at 4 a.m this morning and we saw things that humans really shouldn't see uh but we, we learned a great deal about human anatomy this morning so for those of you that are doing a biol phd go out and, and see the world it's it's a remarkable thing so and julie darling we are thinking if you julie's having a baby in five weeks while doing a phd um so we are thinking of you julie you are very very precious to us so think about what creating a new stability would look like how relationships operate in this environment when when both parties are working from home sometimes take a deep breath before you speak I reckon. Sometimes take a deep breath. Do a downward facing dog. That's right. Lots of that. Yeah. Fantastic. So do, and that'll make a real difference. And I say the challenge we're having in the household is Jay <laughs> is now recording online lectures. He's discovered Collaborate. He's doing stuff with oh, Collaborate so. that we can't even begin to imagine. He's bought a Zoom subscription. He's, he's spent all the time looking at women in STEM for the background of his Zoom lectures. Oh, so it's all happening. But of course, he's recording lectures. And like I'm trying to do stuff as well. So it's all happening. I'm trying to not create noise for him. And he's trying to not create noise for me. And it's all really happening. And how you're all going to manage that, I think Karen's point's a great one, is work on the routine. And I think also realise, as this whole gig has been about today, change. This is going to be a new way of working and new doesn't mean worse. New just means different That's right. and different can be terrific as well. And as we've talked about with a lot of you with the little ones, with the little, little people, uh, then thinking about 
short bursts, so intense bursts with the thesis or intense bursts with your research. So little people, time, the little people might be asleep, the little people might be watching a cartoon and for that 20 minutes go high intensity interval training on your PhD. It's a different way of working. Remember our focus is every day stay connected to the thesis. Stay connected to the thesis. Remember we talked about it yesterday, all the research shows it. The people that stay linked with this every single day, doesn't matter for how long, they're the ones that finish. The people that with the best intention in the world have a research day on Friday, not enough, not enough. Stay connected a little bit every day. And I also wanted to do with the family bit a shout out to everyone that's a little bit we worried about their parents and their grandparents because that's a huge thing. Obviously, Karen's a wonderful mum. We're all very concerned about she's a wonderful human being. She's terrific. She's a terrific human being. But, you know, working through challenges at this point. Doris and Kevin. Kevin is 92. Doris is 90. And look, it is a little bit fronting. They're both as bright as a button and they're both incredibly healthy. But they're 92 and 90. And so I'm very well aware they can be healthy. But anybody who, who has got crosses this, yep. who crosses their path, anybody who crosses their path, and they're very social people, can I say. Grabbers and the gobby. This is genetic. This, you, should, you think I'm loud, meet my father. Um, but the point is they're social people. And so even with a will of their own, they're vulnerable and I understand the stress of that they're in a different state so our states have locked down in Australia so if I wanted to go and visit them I can't so I get the stress of that so let's keep everybody safe let's keep the older crew safe big thing for me done a lot of work on on older crew let's keep the older crew safe that's why a community that's why we're a community and let's look after ourselves and by looking after ourselves we look after the older crew we're, let's hope we've got enough civilization left, team, that that's an important gig. So let's finish off in the last couple of minutes, team, with personal stuff. So we've gone, you see what I've done there, Karen? See what I've done there? Start here. Come here. There's a plan here. So let's start with the personal stuff. And I'll cut and paste our final question of the day. And look, it's probably the most important one, Karen. What is of fundamental importance? To you, you asking me? Well, I, I was putting it out to the universe, but Karen, you can pick that up from the universe and answer it because it is the question. My family, your family, hmm. your family, and and that value because that's that value is everything. So that's the gauze or the lens through which everything else takes place. Now, your gauze or lens might be different, and that's tremendous and important. You know, I've spent a lot of my life on my own. You know, doing whatever you do on your own and you've got all the weird stuff happening in your head. Those of you that are living alone, right, I get that. Work out what is fundamentally important to you and make that the lens. Make that the determinant of everything else. And so what I particularly wanted to talk about today, guys, in focusing our mind on what's important, and I found this last night and I sort of slightly fixated on it, is I found 600, I'm not joking, 600 free university courses for the best universities in the world all fields all fields and there are five that i would like to do right now including this great one from the open university making change happen wow so look i'm going to do that there's also another great one on sustainable work practices that i think is incredibly important so what i'm trying to do and see if this is useful for you. Amanda, you are wonderful. What I think is important here, team, is every day wake up and try and infuse yourself with a new idea. So go to bed that night a different person than you were when you woke up. Learn something new every day. And it may be from one of these quick and fab fabulous courses. It may be reading something new. It may be talking to somebody that's fantastic. So basically my maxim in life at the moment is what can I do to improve my brain today? And that's getting me through at the moment. So it means I'm going to bed going, oh, gee, that was a weird day. Well, that was a stressful day. And look, I understand it. You know, it's the stress them and it's like wow I've got Panadol on my bag okay which is rare for me I just never do that 
Yes, just Panadol. We talked about dropping a tab of acid early on, but I get that. It is, it, it's stressful. It is stressful. So get the downward facing dogs happening. But we start team with improving who we are today, learning something new today. And look, if I have a critique of the planet right now, it is that we're being reactive. We're reacting to the stuff around us rather than sitting in the present and making decisions and making decisions. So let's acknowledge what we can control and acknowledge what we can't control and focus on, I think, what we're going to do today. And also, what am I going to do this hour? And if we focus on how can I make this next hour the best hour of my life? That's what I'm focusing on. This next hour, how can I make this something I'll remember? Make this magnificent. And that team is how we not only understand change, but maybe how we make changes. So thank you for being with me today. Thank you for the gorgeous Karen, for being an absolute legend. We adore you. Tomorrow is the zombie apocalypse edition. Uh, we, have a, yeah, we, have a, we have a special guest because Karen won't be here. I'm bringing in another special guest who's going there. Basically, here's one I prepared earlier who has managed an earlier trauma and lived to tell the tale. So my darlings, you are precious. You are extraordinary. You are wonderful. Thank you for your time as always. And I tell you what, have a good hour. Go have a good hour and see if you can make it a good day. Take care. Bye. Love you lots. Bye-bye. Bye. Can I end it? Can I end it? End it.